system, uh, I'll be talking about simultaneous approximation algorithms for adversarial and online uh, settings in budgeted allocation problems. This is a joint work with Bahab Mirotni from Google and Shayana Westaran from here at Stanford and this is cool. So at first I define the problem, I'll go over the related work, I motivate that problem and I'll present our results. Uh, so I'll be talking about AdWords problem uh, today and uh, in this problem we have a fixed set of nodes X which are basically the advertisers. It's given in advance uh, and we also have a set of online nodes which arrive one by one. And you can think of them as search keywords. There are uh, clearly weighted edges between these two set of nodes and whenever an online node arrives uh, its edges will be revealed to us and each advertiser has also some capacity or budget in this example there are three advertisers with three uh, different capacities uh, then the first node arrives with two, way, two edges with base two and one the second one node Z, U, and V. The offline optimum solution is to assign Z and V to advertiser C and assign X to B and U to A. Uh, whenever an online node arrives, you have to make a decision whether you want to allocate it to some advertiser or just throw it away. So this is the uh, whole problem. There are two main different settings. You can assume that the sequence of online nodes uh, arrive in an arbitrary order and it could be adversarial or you can assume that it's a random permutation order. And there are different results for, uh, for these two different settings. So in the adversarial order, there's the work of Mehta, Sabari, and uh, Umesh and Vijay Vazirani's. The, they give uh, 1 minus 1 over a competitive algorithm for this setting. For the online, uh, online or stochastic model, there is a 1 minus epsilon competitive algorithm by Devonor and Hayes. Uh, by formulating uh, an LP relaxation and estimating dual variables. The second algorithm uh, doesn't have any good competitive ratio when the input is adversarial. So if we want to have an algorithm that works for both of the settings, we have to come up with either a better bound for the algorithm, algorithm of Mehta et al. or come up with a new algorithm. So uh, let me at first uh, go over the balance algorithm. Uh, in this algorithm, uh, they assign weights to, to advertisers or beans, uh, which is basically a function of the ratio of their spent budget. So they have a scoring function f, which gets the ratio of the budget of uh, the bean which has been spent so far and assigns a weight to the bin. Then when a new online node arrives, they try to, they basically find the, the bin that maximizes the product of the weight of the bin and the, uh, the weight of the edge between that bin and the new arrived uh, ball. So this greedy approach gives us a one minus one over a competitive algorithm for the worst case scenarios. And the question is, does that do anything better when the input is uh, random arrival. So there are different ideas in these uh, settings. There are primal methods for known distributions. When you know the distribution of the arrive, uh, arriving online nodes, you can uh, compute the offline solution and based on that offline solution you can allocate the future uh, balls. And there is also uh, dual methods for unknown distributions which you can use a small fraction of nodes at the beginning to estimate the dual variables and uh, use that to allocate future balls. But none of these techniques uh, gives us, uh, give us any good approximation or good competitive ratio for adversarial setting. So the question is, uh, can we get both of them together? Because, I mean the problem is interesting because uh, first of all, the adversarial setting is too pessimistic and we cannot assume that it's uh, the worst 
possible scenario is going to happen. On the other hand, we cannot assume that the sequence of online balls is going to be perfectly random. And so we, ha we have to come up with some algorithms that work well in, uh, in the adversarial setting. And if, if the setting is random arrival, if the input is random arrival, it works better, better than the uh, just 1 minus 1 over a complete ratio. So here are our results. Uh, first of all, we show that it's not possible to get uh, best of the both words for weighted uh, inputs. Basically, we prove that if, if an algorithm is one, have, has competitive ratio 1 minus epsilon in the random arrival model, it cannot have a uh, competitive ratio of more than 4 square root of epsilon in the adversarial setting. So basically, if you want to have 1 minus 1 over a competitive ratio in the adversarial setting, you cannot get better than almost 97% in the random arrival model. In our second result, we showed that the algorithm balance has competitive ratio of 76%. We also showed that for some example, if, if, there, if the input is random arrival. And for some random arrival uh, settings, we show that it's, it's not more than 81% uh, competitive. And finally, for unweighted cases, we show that the algorithm balance gets uh, the competitive ratio of 1 minus epsilon. So these are our three results. Uh, first of all, I go over uh, the hardness result. Uh, it's pretty simple. We have two beans with the same capacity. There are, uh, there are blue balls uh, which have weight uh, 0.1 for the blue bean and weight 1 for the red bean. And there is also some red balls which have weight 0 for the blue, ball, blue bean and weight 1 for the red bean. There are 100. Uh, blue balls and 10 red, red balls. So in the offline solution, you can allocate blue balls to the blue bean and fill it up, and the same for, for the red bean. So the offline solution fills both of the beans completely. And you can assume that there is a random permutation generated. And uh, just look at the first 10 balls of this random permutation. You'll probably see one red ball and nine blue balls. In, in this part of the sequence because there were 100 blue balls and 10 red balls uh, in total. In the adversarial input, you have to allocate all of these balls to the red bin. Because if you don't do that, you're not, you, there might be the case that you don't get, get to see any good ball in future. And in, that, in the stochastic input, you have to allocate them based on their colors. So, there are different strategies for different uh, settings, and but whatever you, your algorithm chooses, you will be off in one of these two settings. So this is the hardness result. Now uh, I'll show you how we analyze the algorithm balance for online um, settings. Basically, it's a general framework. The algorithm balance has some scoring function for different pins. We, we define a potential function, which is just the sum of the products of all capacities multiplied by uh, this, the antiderivative of the scoring function. And uh, we, can, we can, bound the can bound the changes of uh, this potential function during, during al algorithm. Because if you, uh, if you allocate a new ball to a bean, the change in the potential function would be almost equal to the scoring function times the weight of the edge between the ball and the bin that we are assigning it to. So the, the grid algorithm is exactly trying to maximize the increase in the potential function if we define the potential function this way. So we can have a nice inequality and basically we can have a mathematical program to analyze. So in this mathematical program, we have n balls, so we have n time slots. And uh, capital F is just an antiderivative of uh, scoring function. O sub j is how much the optimum solution allocates to bin j. The first equality is just uh, the definition of potential function. The first inequality is the important inequality to look at. It just says that if you look at the change 
the increase in the potential function in epsilon fraction of time, it should be almost at least uh, the change if we allocate the balls according to the optimum solution. It's at least as good as that. And that's enough to have the whole mathematical program. It takes more time to change this mathematical program to a factor revealing linear program, and that gives us 76 competitive ratio. Actually, if we, we basically discretize the time horizon and ratios into one over epsilon uh, intervals, and if we have 30 intervals, we get 73 competitive ratio. If we increase it to 250, we get the 76 competitive ratio. For unweighted cases, uh, in, in unweighted setting, all weights are equal to 1. So we can use the same uh, factor revealing linear program, but here we can assume, uh, we can assume that all balls are allocated to some beans uh, if we allow uh, overloading beans by at most a factor of 2. Because if a new ball arrives and there is no place for it, we can allocate it based on the optimum solution, just, uh, and then it gives us uh, an overloading factor of at most 2, and that helps us to uh, actually solve the linear program explicitly, and this gives us a 1 minus epsilon competitive ratio. Okay, thank you. Yes, it, uh, we assume that actually in the previous work, uh, they assume that all capacities are larger than, are much larger than the weights. And if you do not assume that there is no better than one half approximation for even the random permutation model, for known distributions, there are better. I think there is one minus one over your time. But for random permutation, the best thing is one half if you don't assume. The right number is closer to your upper hand or no? uh, It's closer to what? To your upper hand, but you have like 0.96. I don't think so. I, I, I think it's really hard. I mean, the, the hardness result is pretty simple. There might be other hardness results, which uh, are like 90% or something like that. And there, there, there is a, the diagonal balance doesn't get better than 81. Uh, for some instances, so it might be a solution. I don't know. And we just started to think about this problem, so there's much more work to do. <laughs> <laughs>